So let's rename main to uh, register UI. And then let's create a register circuit. And since that, since uh, Logisim doesn't like that, we'll do uh, reg 16. Okay, so we need 16 of our bit components. So let's include the library that we just created. So we need 16 bits because each register is 16 bits wide. Let's make this smaller so it's easier to deal with. So I'm going to lay out 16 of these and I'll be right back. The clocks all have to be wired together. So let's do those first. Okay, have all the clock pins wired up. Let's uh, join the two banks together and uh, join the load and the clock and expose them through two input pins. So now what remains is to wire up a bus, an input bus for all of these individual inputs, and then an output bus for all of the outputs. And I'll use the splitter and make this a 16-bit to be able to contain all of the inputs into one bus. Since with the CPU, we just deal with 16-bit registers generally and not access individual ones, or at least when we do, we'll fan them out and, and access them appropriately. So I'll wire these up on both sides and I'll be back. So I have my two 8-bit bis, eight bit, uh, D buses here. So we want to join those together and, and I think this is how you do it. So we want the bit within to be 16. So for the input of this, because that'll be our 16-bit input. And then we want the fan out, yes, to be 2. So lower 8 bits go there. Upper 8 bits go there. OK, I have both halves of the output bus hooked up. Now we need another splitter really to combine the two buses together like we did on the other side. So that's going to be a bit width of 16. This half is the zero through seven side. So something like that, I mean, not sure if the selected state matters, so we'll turn it off. Okay, so there's that side, and then that side, and then we need a Q pin. That is 16 bits. And we want to flip it around. Just like that. I think that is our completed 16-bit register. Oh yeah, one more thing. I uh, forgot to flip that to an output, which would definitely cause problems. So let's create our user interface component just so we can test this out and or synthesize it. So let's start out with the register we just created. So we'll hook up the load to one dip switch on one bank. We'll call this, uh, we'll put that on the center bank. 
if we were to realize this on my Alcatria AU board. Okay, so we have load switchable now, and we need a clock. So let's put the clock on there. And we need some switches to be able to set the state of the register. And so uh, I have two, two switch banks. Um, and actually, I said center. We probably need to make that the left one because I'm going to use the right and the center switch banks to put in the values. Okay, so we need to hook up our D. So what I'm going to do is try to hook these up how they appear on the board. Okay, so if we have a splitter and we face it south, yeah, okay, I think this might work because I want bit eight, the, the labels marked eight to contain the zeroth bit. Well, or the, the lowest bit for the for the byte. Yeah, I think that works. Nice. And then this will be the input. Okay. And then we need a fan out for the LEDs. So another splitter. Now we need to label our user interface components so we know what's what. So we're going to call this one um, SWR. And we're going to call this one SWC for center. And move the label so I can see it. And then we'll call this. Uh, We'll just call this one L0. And then maybe cap because that looks like an I. Doesn't really matter. Oh, and there does seem to be a bug. Oh, yeah. I meant to uh, log this. So it still thinks there's an L0 and it won't let you do a capital. Put this back to L0, what happens? Yeah, it takes it. Okay, we'll leave it. But if you try to change it to L0 with capital, it won't let you. It it uh, <laughs> it forces you to put in a capital L1. So I kind of view that as a bug. And then for these labels, I'm going to... I guess I could all put them south. I guess I should have done that. Let's see. Label, label, label. Here it is. South. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go label these and I'll be back. Okay, so I have all the labels done. We can just simulate this now and see if this works. So let's start our clock. Hmm, that's interesting. And that certainly doesn't look right. Our load is low, so that should not be happening. So let's go look at the circuit and see what's going on. I must have some errant. So that's on bit zero. Bit zero. Oh, it looks like there's some no joining going on right here. Okay, I think I have all this straightened out and I was trying to get cute, be lazy. And when these things are too close together and you try the, uh, you know, the glue on and grab out, um, it, it does work except if you, so for example, there's a connection, a terminal point right there. And if that terminal point lands on that wire, 
then you wind up, you know, making a, a junction there. So had to go through and delete all the inter- all those errant junctions and then sort of re-add them. And so now it looks it looks correct. So let's try to test it again. So back over here. <clears throat> let's start up our clock. Okay, so I don't have that flashing anymore. That's a good sign. So let's uh, let's turn on number one, and then let's turn on the load. And number one comes on. Okay, great. So let's turn on another one. And then the next clock signal. And if I turn that off, then that should go off the next clock signal. Should stay on. Okay, so far, so good. Yeah, looks like we have a working register. So if I turn the load off and then I say flip this last bit, this should stay out and it does. Okay, so on the surface, that seems like it's uh, working okay. Let's synthesize it just for fun. So to synthesize it, we need to, well, let's just annotate everything that I didn't annotate because it'll complain otherwise. And um, we want to bump our frequency up to something a little... Do we want to do it? uh, I guess we could do it real slow, just like the simulation did. This is the board we want to use. Let's try it again. Okay, so we have to map all the LEDs. Right, and so we want, so yeah, so there's our center switch, and there's our left, and then our right. So we're all mapped. Since this is running, I'll be right back. Okay, since this is done, I'm going to say no, I don't want to download, because download doesn't work for this board. <clears throat> I have to do it manually. So this is my loader for the Alcatree board. You can get it off Alcatree's website if you have this board. And it is located in uh, Sandbox. MVP runs, Impl. And then find the bit file right here. And then program. Oh, would help to plug my board in. And it's programmed. Okay, and here is our board. Now, uh, let me turn these switches off because they don't mean anything. Don't want to confuse you. Uh, So, Again, nothing is lit, which makes sense, because the load's not on. The load switch, if we recall, the left bank uh, is here. So if I turn that on, nothing should still happen because none of these switches are on. Now, if I turn this one on, next clock cycle, that should come on, and it does. Again, the clock's running real slow. It's running at one hertz, so it takes a bit of time for this to come on. Now, if I turn this off, nothing should happen. That should stay on, and it does. And if I turn another bit on, nothing happens because load is off. Now, if I turn load on, this should come on, and it does. Okay, so turn that one on. That comes on. Lower the load. Everything stays on. Turn load on. Turn that off. That should go off, and it does. Turn that on. That should come on. And let's try the upper bank. That should come on. And then I turn that one off. Everything stays on. So, looks like we've got a successfully synthesized 16-bit register on the way for our 
hack CPU implementation.